So recently one of the members on my Discord server mentioned they were having issues with the disk drive in their 128D. And they also shared some photos of the PCB in that thing. And as you can see, there are a number of what look like potentially corroded traces. So they went looking for a replacement PCB and unfortunately came up empty handed. However, they did find someone who was previously selling the board for the 1571, but it looks like they've since stopped. Now you would think because the 128D is basically a 1571, just internalized rather than external, you can just take the board out of this thing and stick it in this thing. And mind you, this is the plastic case 128D, so it has an external drive board controller rather than the metal case DCR, which has all the drive logic built into the main board. I mentioned that I had a spare non-working 1571. Um, both the upper and lower read-write heads in this are open circuit, and that's a pretty common problem on these drives, but the logic board itself does work. So I figured it should be simple enough to take the board out of this thing and stick it in a 128D. Unfortunately, looking on Google, I couldn't find any record of anyone actually doing it. So today, we're gonna try just that. We're gonna take the logic board from a external 1571 and hopefully shoehorn it into a 128D. Now, the board in this machine does work. Um, the pictures that I showed earlier are obviously not of the board in this machine. And um, I don't have any real reason to swap these two over, apart from just wanting to try it out and see if it's actually possible. So let's rip the board out of the 1571 and jammed in the 128D. And I don't know about you, but all this PCB talk has got me thinking about PCB Way. Yes, your one-stop shop for PCB prototyping and assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, and so much more. They also have a really neat shared project section where you can find all sorts of projects from members of the community that you can then order and build yourself or have PCB Way build it for you. So what are you waiting for? Head over to PCB Way today and we thank them for sponsoring this video. And just like that, we have the board out of the 1571. Now you'll notice it is missing a chip here. That is a CIA, the 6526 or the 8521. I think I actually pulled it from this board to save a different 1571 that was sent over by Vichy from the Netherlands some time ago. So um, at least this has already saved one drive and it may end up saving another one as well. Right, so here's our 1571 drive mech and this is the floppy controller board. And uh, the main logic board is down here, and this is basically the same as the 128 flat, which is down there just off camera that you can't see, never mind. Now straight away I can see one obvious issue, and that is the boards are different sizes. In fact, this thing will get in the way of the drive mechanism if you try and place it in this corner. So it may have to be mounted over here somewhere. Obviously we can free up some space by removing this board because in theory it won't be needed, but um, we may have to figure out another place to put this thing. Apart from that, everything else seems mostly the same. Obviously the layout is slightly different and uh, the internal drive doesn't have these IC connectors on the back, so we'll have to figure out how to hook this up to that. But we've got our read write head connection here and it looks like all of these match up to these connections over here. The other problem we might run into is that the power connector is different. So on the 128D, we've got this big chunky cable that plugs in over here. And on the 1571 board, it's this connector that's for the power. So that's not gonna work. We might need to adapt something there. Let's first get this board out and I might pillage the uh, CIA chip and just stick it in here so we're ready to go. And then we'll figure out the wiring issues. Oh, and if you're wondering, this wire here actually goes to a switch which controls the device ID number. I did a video on that about a year ago, so I'll link that up there if you want to see how it's done. All right, that's our board free. And um, yeah, on the 1571 board, it actually has dedicated switches for the device ID, which would normally be accessible on the rear of the 1571. But of course, this thing is all internal, so uh, we don't really need to worry about this cable right now. We'll just put that out of the way. So if we could put the board this way, it'd be perfectly fine, but um, that actually gets in the way of the case itself. And there's not much you can really trim off this board. You probably wouldn't want to do that anyway. Let's snip that cable tie, see if we can get just a little bit more slack. Although if we have the board over here, there's a good amount of slack and obviously all these reach, then we'd just need to work out this connector and obviously power connector. 
And yeah, this machine was in a pretty rough state when I first got it. And you can see on my board, some of the traces there may be showing signs of corrosion as well. I think it's just from having this board at the rear of the machine and then having these vents over the top, possibly some, you know, water or whatever got inside there and has started corroding the traces. But this thing currently still works well. I think it does. I didn't actually test it before doing this, but it should still be working. Let's first try and figure out the power connector as the only other part of this puzzle is this thing here. And that's just basically a serial port just on a pin header rather than a DIN connector. So we should be able to design something that can go from here straight into here. So we'll just see if we can tone this out. So these two look like ground, guessing that's gonna be 12 volts, which would be for the drive motors. And this will be five volts for all the logic and such. Yep, that is ground, and that is ground. So, yep, two black wires are ground. And this, is that gonna be the same five volts that goes to the main board? Quite possibly. I just realized an easy way to work this out is just to plug the machine in and check the voltages. Um, this board has a metal shield on the bottom, so it shouldn't short out to anything underneath. Let's power on. So the machine is on, there's a power LED, and now we can see what is on these pins. Yeah, the red one is definitely five volts. Yellow one is 12 volts, as expected. So it should be pretty easy to work out how this connector is wired. So let's just check for ground first. So the outer pin, All right, so the left pin, and the third pin are both ground. So if the second pin is 12 volts and the fourth pin is five volts, then the pin out basically matches. It's just the connectors are different. Five volts should be pretty easy to determine. Let's just go from that pin to one of the logic. Yeah, that would definitely be five volts. So yeah, the pin out matches. It's just the connectors are different. Uh, so how am I gonna make this fit on there? All right, I have a plan. DuPont connectors. These will obviously plug directly into the board, so no issues there. And then we just need to connect them up to here. Um, now, obviously I don't actually need to do this mod, so I don't wanna make this thing too permanent. So I think I'm just gonna try and plug these. Okay, can't plug them in the end, they just fall out. Well, there we go. It's pretty dodgy, but I think that's a decent enough connection. Uh, that's going to five volts ground, 12 volts ground. We should be good. Let's power on the machine and see if the drive does anything or if we get magic smoke. I don't know if you heard that, but the drive motor spun up. So that is actually a good sign. What I don't see is the drive light coming on. Let me just turn this around. Right, so normally when I power the machine on, the drive LED should light up and it's clearly not doing that. So maybe I've just got this connector backwards. Let's try and swap that around without disturbing the dodgy power connection. Yeah, still nothing on the LED though. Now the drive mode is just spinning continuously. Huh. Let's just get some measurements from this pin header. See if we can work out what's going on here. So we've got 12 volts from the left pin to the middle pin. Nothing on the outer pin. So yeah, there's a constant 12 volts between these two pins. If there's 12 volts between those two pins, then that LED should be on all the time. It's definitely not turning on. I wonder if it's the other way around. If I stick those like that. Aha, the LED is on and it's always on. 
So that makes me think that the other pin might be somehow different. Let's offset it that way. Nothing. What about that way? Hey, oh, yes, that's what we want to see. Drive LED comes on and turns off. So why is that different? So here's the external 1571 and I can already see a difference. This has a board at the front here that has both the power and drive LEDs and obviously the 128D has the drive LED on one board, the power LED on another. So uh, even though these both have a three pin connector, obviously they're wired up slightly differently. But that's totally fine, it just means that we have to put the connector slightly offset, so leave this pin exposed and switch the connector around sort of backwards, I guess you'd say. Still seems to work, so not an issue there. Uh, I guess the last thing we really need to sort out is hooking up this IEC connection to this connector. So, this needs to go in there. More DuPont connectors? Right. I have a thought though, where is it? So this is the SD to IEC and Epix fast load cartridge. And I remember making the cable for this, which went from DuPont connectors to an IEC connector. So maybe we can just plug that in there and then just, well, plug that in there. Let's pull this off. I'm just, well, I don't know what the pinout's going to be. Oh, and there's actually one, there's one extra pin. How does that work? Like this, in theory, should be the same as the regular serial port, which only has six pins. And this must have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, here's the drive board for the 128D, and that's our IEC connector. And um, yeah, there's seven pins on it. I wonder if one of them is possibly not connected or they're both connected together. I think we might have to tone it out. All right, looking on Zimmers, I found a 1571 schematic by Appy, which I think is the same guy who was selling the um, replacement 1571 boards. So um, that's kind of funny, but this should, in theory, be pretty accurate then. All right, it looks like most of the connections from the serial port go to U15 on the 1571 board, so on this one. Hopefully, this is also very similar. There is U15, which is somewhat close to the port, so let's see if that tones out. All right, so after a bit of toning it out, here's what I found. Um, pin one on this connector goes to U14, pin two, so right there. Um, pin two is ground. Pin three, four, and five go to U15, which matches the uh, 1571 schematics, and also pin seven. Pin six doesn't seem to go anywhere, so I'm gonna say that's not connected. Um, I could try and take this cover off, I guess, and double check that. Looks like it's just held in by these twist tabs. Let's just make sure that's not connected, just in case. Well, at least the bottom of the board looks to be in good condition. So uh, where's our connector? Here. Yeah, definitely no trace coming off pin six on this side. And uh, I've already checked these other traces under here. None of them are coming from pin six. So pin six is almost certainly not connected. Okay, so now we just need to work out if this pinout matches the same pinout on the IC connector. So I think what I'm going to do is just plug this in here and then we should be able to test from the connector. So if we imagine this is going to be pin one, this should go to U14 pin two. Where's U14? U14 pin two. And it does not. What if this was pin one? No. What if my probes were not working? Yes. Um, those colors do not match. Let's try that again, shall we? All right. This, ah yes, it does go to pin two. Good. 
Next one should go to ground. Even better. Pin three should go to U15, pin five. Yep. Pin four should go to U15, pin three. Yep. Five goes to U15, pin one. Yes, it does. And six, well, six is not connected, so I'm guessing this is going to go to U15, pin nine. Uh, that one? Yes, it does. Well, that's kind of convenient. This um, actually pretty much matches this connector. So as my little DIN cable is quite short, I've put a little extension on this. So it's just a bunch more DuPont connectors. Basically it's wired straight through from the plug. So the first five connections can plug straight in and it is marked pin one on the main board. So that's pretty simple. Just like so. And then we skip one pin because pin six is not connected and connect that to seven instead. And that's just come open. This is all very janky, but um, you know, I'm not actually gonna be keeping this mod permanent. So it's just good enough for a test. Right, that should be everything hooked up correctly. Let's give this quick power on before we hook up a display just to see if the drive actually tries to seek because normally on the 128, it'll try and auto boot off a disc if there's one in there. So because we've got our serial connection now, it should be able to tell the drive controller, look for a disc, hopefully. Yeah, just like that. I think this might actually work. Let's get a display. Right, everything's hooked up. Let's give this a go. Looks good. Uh, I guess we should run some diagnostics, see if we can actually load something. All right, I've thrown in the 1571 diagnostic test disc. So this should auto boot or not. Uh, let's try the directory. Okay, directory works. That's a good start. Uh, let's just try and load the tests. All right, so far so good. Uh, load from device eight, run tests on device eight. System type to be tested. Ah, yes, this can either test a 1571 or a 128 d um, I don't know what you'd classify this as at the moment. Let's just go with 128 d All right, system test. This is looking good. Let's uh, run all tests. Uh, formatted right protected disk, okay. Here you go. Go. Seems good. Right, those three pass. Let's do the read write test. I'm guessing I'll need a different disc. Yes, blank disc. This one should do it. We'll say it's unformatted just to make it go through the full test. So it should format both sides and then actually try and write to both sides as well. All right, that all seems good to me. Uh, it does want you to put this disc in another 1571 so it can actually compare the results and make sure it can read on another drive, but uh, I'm not gonna bother about doing that. It seems to work just fine. So I think we're all good on the read write tests. I don't know if there's much left to do. Uh, let's skip that. Remove the disc, okay. Um, Let's go back to the main menu, see if there's anything else we can test for. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the soft error tests. They shouldn't be necessary. Let's go logic diagnostic.
Oh yes, so it's valid for systems with the following ROMs, 310.654.03, which is what is already installed on this board. So we should get, all right, let's just hit enter. Ah, is, is the activity LED on the C128D blinking at a constant rate? No, it is not blinking at all. Reset the 128B by turning off power. I don't want to. Can't we just try it again? All right, so the drive LED is not blinking. I wonder if that's an issue because we loaded up the 128D tests and now we're running a 1571 board in a 128D. I mean, in theory, they should be exactly the same apart from the stuff that we've already covered. Um, let's, let me just reset this and I'll try those tests again. Oh, so I just tried running the tests again with 128D selected and this time, um, yeah, it's broken properly. So, all right, let's try the 1571 tests and see if that does the same thing. All right, so we'll leave the system type as 1571. Logic Diagnostic. Blah, 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 go. Yes, we are now getting a single flash at a constant rate. So, yes it is. One flash, system okay, no failure. Right, so apparently there is some kind of difference between this board in the 128D and the board from the 1571. Exactly what that is in terms of logic, I don't know. But I think we can safely say that as long as you select the right test, uh, testing for that particular logic board, it should work just fine. And yeah, all the read and write tests seem to work just fine. So I can't see any issues here. This in theory, works just fine. Let's just double check the functionality in 64 mode. Uh, I'm just going to load up a quick program, see if it works. Oh, and I don't have Jiffy DOS enabled, so this might take a minute. I'm not going crazy. That is flickering, isn't it? That's oh, a bad connection somewhere. All right, well, that appeared to work. Yep, it certainly does. I don't have sound connected and I ain't dancing. So um, that's all I wanted to know there. Um, I can't see any reason why this shouldn't work full time, apart from my dodgy setup here. But um, like I said, I'm not actually gonna be keeping this in my machine. I'm gonna put the original board back in. But yeah, this should hopefully help out Dave, who will be the recipient of this 1571 board because, well, I mean, Although I might come across another 1571 that needs a replacement logic board, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So uh, better to see this board save a 128D rather than just sit around waiting for a new drive mechanism. So um, yeah, I think that is it. Um, let's just quickly go over what needs to be done just in case you want to do this yourself or ever need to for some reason. Uh, let's bring the machine back over. Let's just make sure it will fit properly. Of course, you'll also need to figure out how to mount the board, but I think, yeah. Case still closes, no problem. So no worries there. Um, I guess like a 3D printed bracket or something might be needed just to secure the 1571 board in place. Um, so really all you need to do is hook up power. Um, you'd probably want to just change over this whole connector so that it can actually plug into the 1571 board. And as for the pinout, pin one is on the left hand side here. So pin one is actually ground, pin two is 12 volts, pin three is ground, pin four is five volts. And as for the drive LED, you need to plug this in so that you have the black wire, assuming that these are all wired the same, on the middle pin and the white wire on the leftmost pin, which is pin one, leaving the rightmost pin empty.
All the motor and sensor connections just plug straight in, just make sure you've got them in the correct orientation. Um, the heads plug straight in. You'd probably want to put some strain relief on these wires somewhere just so they don't accidentally get pulled when the drive head moves forward or if this thing moves back slightly because yeah there isn't a lot of room for error here so it's possible that if these cables are just a little bit shorter you might need to actually make a little extension on these. And then finally the IEC connector, you can do what I've done here and just plug in a regular IEC cable and then just route that to the main board. Um, this is the pinout, but if you were designing your own cable, I have written up a quick little note here. So this is the pinout as you're looking at it from the rear of this board. Let me just unplug all this because I think we're done with our testing. So if you're looking at this socket from the rear of the board, you would take this pin up here, which is labeled five, that would go to pin five on this connector. Obviously the top right pin on here, pin one would go to one on there, so on and so forth. So that is how you do it. And of course, pin six on the 128D is not connected. So you'd just leave that blank. And if you're mounting it this way, then you'd probably want an IEC cable with at least a good 20 centimeters, probably 30 centimeters length, just to reach from here over to here. All right, the machine's back together and it all still appears to be working, so at least it didn't break anything. And as for this 1571 board, it can go to its new owner and hopefully that'll fix their 128D. So um, yeah, there we go. That is how you swap a 1571 board into a Commodore 128D. A little bit messy, but um, until somebody reverse engineers the uh, board in the 128D itself for the drive mechanism, um, it's probably the best we're gonna get. Uh, maybe if one day my board corrodes far enough that it stops working as well, because some of the traces on mine also don't look great, I might try and reverse engineer it myself, but um, I know that's a huge amount of work and not something that I've undertaken before. There's people out there that are way better at that than I am. So um, hopefully I won't need to do that anytime soon. And hopefully we don't see more of these boards dying in 128Ds. So um, yeah, I guess that is it for this one. So thank you all for watching and a huge thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. If you wanna do the same, links to that are in the video description. And um, yeah, that's it from me. So catch you next time. Bye. All right, get this thing packed up.